Hello, everyone. It's time for Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 268, season 11. Today's date is October 24th, 2023, and welcome to the program. Uh, on today's program, I will talk about uh, my tribute to TV anchor man and reporter Harry Porterfield. He just passed away uh, yesterday morning at the age of 95. Oh, that's so sad. Also, I'll talk about the 1937 movie in old Chicago. And I talk about my memories of this movie and it's, uh, it's plot and, uh, and, uh, it's something that doesn't fit in Chicago is, <laughs> you know, some things like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. So uh, that, I find this very interesting. Also, and also I'll talk about these, uh, those, excuse me, those, uh, peanuts paperback, uh, books from Charles Schultz. Uh, I had uh, a collection of those at one time when I was a kid in the 1970s. I'll talk about that as well. But first, the program will go into a per- commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Reuniti Wine. Oh, I remember this wine. And I also remember that this commercial and others. So here's a commercial from 1982. So just sit back and relax, and I'll be right back with the show. Thank you, everyone. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Rio Needy Wine. That's nice. <laughs> I used to hear that all the time in the 80s. So uh, it's still in business. I haven't seen it lately. Uh, I'll give you a brief history about this uh, little libation. It's, it's uh, It was founded in 1950. Uh it's a it's a type of lam, lambrusco wine, oh, like that, and it's like red or white, and uh, it just and it it just caught on uh, uh, during the seventies and the nineteen eighties, and you saw the commercials on TV, and uh, it just took off, and. Uh, then it quiet down and you didn't see it much and but it's still in business you know you can still buy it if you want but it's not as prominent as other wines so uh i think i tried it once a long time ago i'm not a big wine drinker not really uh i like champagne that's it and that's a new year's i've always said that uh you know i you know if i have dinner i would usually have water or soda water prefer preferably <laughs> so uh you know so, but a lot of people like wine they, everyone has a choice red white r- you know cold hot, w- room temperature <laughs> anything like that okay so at the beginning of the program uh, i mentioned i'm going to talk about my tribute to tv anchorman and reporter harry porterfield also, I'll talk about the 1937 movie in old Chicago and also the, the Peanuts paperback books from the 1970s. Uh, before I get started, I want to mention something. Um, uh, next week, a uh, week from d- today, that is, is Halloween. And uh, somebody emailed me and says, are you going to do a Halloween episode? Yes, I will do one. Um, I got to think of something like that. Uh, I've done creature features before, or uh, Screaming Yellow Theater, the star the uh, the original Sanguli, Jerry G. Bishop. You know, so we'll see about that. Um, I'm gonna pick a, a a perfect theme, even Shock Theater. You know, most people remember that. That's the, one of the first uh, ho- that had a host. You know, Marvin <laughs> that hosted that. So I, I'll see. I'll think about it. Or do something different about Halloween. It should be that weekend. Uh, I'll probably do a podcast maybe on Halloween, which is Tuesday. We'll see about that. But definitely this weekend I'll do a Halloween episode. 
just to get into the mood, you know. <laughs> um, you know, Halloween is not one of my favorite holidays. Uh, when I was a kid, I was scared to death of it. I don't know why. I, I, I still feel uneasy at times. Uh, I did dress up in costume. I went to a Katrine, which is fine. But, you know, I guess it's the uh, the feeling, the atmosphere of it is just unsettling. I've suffered that all the way to my, like, 30s, you know, like that. You know, I was, like, scared. Uh, then I'm okay now. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, so... The best thing about Halloween is uh, it's November 1st, and it's over. <laughs> and you look forward to Thanksgiving and Christmas, and that's exciting. I love those two holidays. Okay. Right now, I'm going to start with uh, Harry Porterfield. Uh, that was posted on social media yesterday morning, and uh, he passed away at the age of 95, and he had a long, long career. And I love watching him. And uh, he seemed like a very kind man and very informative and, oh, like that. So here's his biography. Uh, he was born in, uh, I'm sorry, he was born on August 29th, 1928 in Saginaw, Michigan. And he began his career in 1955. He was a disc jockey. And uh, that was in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Or is, uh, I guess it was, I don't know. And then he moved over to, and then he moved to Chicago and he began working in WBBM TV uh, Channel 2 in Chicago as a news writer. And then he became an anchorman, you know, and uh, he was mostly, I don't know about the late 60s, I don't think so, but I, I remember in the 70s, uh, I used to see him all the time when I was little. And then uh, he was there until 1985, and he left. And uh, he was there for for a long time, and then he moved to WLS uh, TV, Channel 7. He was there for almost 25 years. Uh, I don't know if he quit or he just uh, didn't renew his contract. I don't know the real reason, but he came back to Channel 2, in 2009, and he was the anchor man at 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I remember watching that. And he was only there for about six years. And then uh, he retired. I guess he was uh, tired of it. <laughs> you know, when you get up a year, get up in years, you know, doing that. Um, so uh, what his famous, what's so famous about Harry Porterfield was his news segments called Someone You Should Know. And he's been, he was doing it since the 70s. And he did on Channel 2, Channel 7. And then he also, and when he returned to Channel 2, he did those as well. And they were, he was most famous about those. And they were about uh, ordinary people in Chicago doing something unique or something worthwhile or beneficial. You know, and it was anyone young, old, you know, I found him fascinating and very entertaining. They did that. And I love his his voice. He was so clear and lucid. And oh, those are great segments. Wonderful segments. I look forward to seeing those, you know, and uh, when I'm watching the news. And... Uh, Let's see what else. So, but in the in the late nineteen eighties, uh, in CBS he was demoted and and became uh, not an anchor anymore, and he became a reporter. And Bill Curtis returned to uh, Channel Two, and that's where uh, Harry Porterfield quit and move over there. And uh, Jesse Jackson. You know, head of Operation Push, he he wanted to boycott the station. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, he did that at Chicago Fest and all that. You know, when he hears something like that, you know, he's right there. <laughs> you know, and uh, that it didn't matter. So uh, I don't know if it worked or not. You know, people still watch Channel Two. You know, 
but then they moved over to Channel 7. I don't know, ratings-wise, I don't know how it, how it went, you know, but uh, that happened a long, long time ago. And I think uh, all is forgiven like that. And uh, so, so it's a shame. So, yeah, he passed away yesterday morning at the age of 95. And uh, he was an icon, a legend, you know, and uh, people are very saddened. They really, they really are, you know, so that's a shame. Okay. Next up, I'm going to talk about in old Chicago. Why, why do you ask me? I'm talking about this movie. Okay. So there's a reason. I used to watch this movie a lot um, in reruns when I was a kid. They showed it on, on WGN TV channel nine all the time. You know, sometimes uh, at night or you know, in the afternoon, you know, when they had the Sunday matinee or, you know, when movies were movies on Sunday nights or or the 1030 movie, the eight o'clock movie. You know, there, there's a you know, there's an interesting podcast up subjects I can talk about, you know, about those the movies uh, that they show on Channel 9. You know, I, the last time I took something like that was about creature features or. They show the Charlie Chan movies. Someday I'll talk about, you know, Abba Costello, or they show the, uh, what else? Uh, Sherlock Holmes. I might, uh, might think about that. Anyway, so uh, in, night, in, in old Chicago, uh, it was released in 1938, but uh, I think it was 1937. So maybe I'll fix that. Um, Anyway, so it was like a, it was a drama, also a musical, and you know, there was singing and all that. This was a fictional account of the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. So this was not real. I mean, the the, the fire's there, but there are a lot of uh, information that uh, wasn't true. So it did have Mrs. O'Leary. She was there. Um, and of course, we've heard the legend that her cow kicked over a lantern and started the fire. Uh, I don't know if it was true or not, but that's uh, based on based on historical facts. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. And then at that time, it was the most expensive movie ever made. You know, they it was like a big budget, uh, you know, movie. You know like that so here's the plot um so the o'leary family uh were traveling to chicago to start a new life and uh it was uh, patrick o'leary and his wife uh molly and their two sons uh, uh so um let me get this straight so the person who uh portrayed uh, patrick o'leary it was an actor called. His name was J. Anthony Hughes. He dies in the in the movie in the beginning, and then uh, his wife, his widow, excuse me, and the sons take over the business. So um, Molly O'Leary is played by Alice Brady. She's a fair, famous actress. Uh, she was in a lot of movies, and uh, and her sons are portrayed. Um, uh, it was Tyrone Power and uh, Don Amici. And Tyrone Power played Dion O'Leary and Don Amici played Jack O'Leary. And also in, also in the movie was uh, Alice Faye as Belle a Fawcett. She was, uh, let's see, she was Dion's uh, girlfriend. So anyway, uh, and also in the movie was Andy Devine. <laughs> Who was Pickle Bixby? Oh, he was great. Uh, he was funny and and in anything he did, he was a great character actor. Anyway, so uh, the father was killed when the wagon hit a bump and the horses break loose and they dragged him. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> With the and uh, and she she started uh, a laundry business in the area called the Patch. Now the Patch. Um, uh, it was, the, that's the neighborhood is West town, which is, uh, that's what it's called. But I think it was called that back then, 
I'm not sure like that. And uh, so they realized to, um, you know, so uh, one of them wanted, uh, wanted the her sons wanted to run for public office, and then you know, corruption in Chicago, like we know today. <laughs> You know, so that's very familiar. And then, uh, so Jack O'Leary was elected mayor. And uh, so I don't want to give away the plot and all that, but we know what's going to happen at the end. Uh, Chicago got on, was on fire. And they showed uh, Daisy, that which was the cow's name, kicking the lantern over and started the fire. And then it just spread quickly all over the, the city. So that's uh, like that. So uh, right now I'm going to play the, the theatrical trailer for In Old Chicago. And uh, when I come back, I'll talk about the uh, historical inaccuracies of the film <laughs> and compare it to the real thing. So. This will be interesting. So just sit back and relax and just uh, listen to the theatrical uh, trailer of In Old Chicago. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And now 20th Century Fox presents In Old Chicago. Tyrone Power is seen as Diane O'Leary. Alice Faye as Belle Fawcett. Don Amici as Jack O'Leary. Alice Brady as Molly O'Leary. Andy Devine as Pickle Bixby. Brian Donlevy as Gil Warren. Phyllis Brooks as Ann Colby. And a supporting cast of thousands. You see, Ma, the fellow only makes $10 a week, and he's got a wife and a family. <laughs> $10 a week? That's just $10 more than you make. I couldn't take his money, could I, Ma? I give up. I've got one son that steals my laundry and spends his money heaven knows where. Another a lawyer and wins cases and don't get paid for them. Oh, you're crazy! You're crazy! Maybe. But I was sane enough until tonight. Then I heard you sing. And something happened to me. Something swept over me that I'd never felt before or never expect to feel again. What are you talking about? I'm in love with you, Belle. You know, it seems funny. You and Diane on one side and me on the other fighting each other. <laughs> well, when we were kids, we were always fighting. But I bet if any other Irish has tried to horn in, it was the O'Leary's against the world. Oh, you said it. I met Miss Fawcett. She's a fine woman. You ought to know her, Ma. Hmm. I will not. And her working in a saloon like any hussy. Oh, that's not fair, Ma. We're living in modern times. That's right. Things have changed since you were a girl. Don't forget, this is 1870. Well, times may have changed, but I haven't changed. And I don't want any daughter-in-law that's the talk of the town and kicking her heels in the air for anyone to see. History lives again as one of the greatest disasters of all time becomes the screen's most memorable achievement. Here truly is mighty entertainment. 22 months in the making at a cost of over $2 million. Magnificently produced by Daryl F. Zanuck and superbly directed by Henry King, in old Chicago is destined to leave a lasting mark in the Motion Picture Hall of Fame. Okay, everyone, I'm back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the trailer. Um, for the 1938 movie uh, in old Chicago. Uh, I want to make a correction. There were not two sons, there were three sons. I forgot about, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bob O'Leary. And that was uh, portrayed by actor Tom Brown. Uh, he wasn't in much of the movie. You know, it's been a long time since I've seen it. So uh, here are the historical accuracy inaccuracies of the movie. Uh, first of all, And uh, let's see what it was. Uh, there was uh, the portrayal of the, the O'Leary family. Um, Mrs. O'Leary, her first name was not Molly, it was Catherine. And uh, they had two children, not three. And uh, she had one son and a daughter. 
Uh, her son's name was James Patrick O'Leary, and he was a, a gambling boss, you know, uh, and saloon owner. And they had a daughter named uh, uh, named Anna. Uh, their father, Patrick O'Leary, did not die as a result of the accident with, that involved the horses when he would drag. He died in 1984. We don't know. And also the French a laundry. Mrs. O'Leary did not run it out of her house. She must have ran it some other place. And uh, the mayor at the time when the Chicago occurred, uh, the Chicago, I'm sorry, the mayor of Chicago when the Chicago fire occurred in 1871, uh, wasn't uh, O'Leary's son. His name was uh, Roswell B. Mason. And he was there for uh, two years. And... Uh, so uh, the O'Leary family, they were involved in gambling and the saloons and all that. So <laughs> that was probably like that. So, yeah, like I said, it's not uh, it's a fictional account of the Chicago fire. You know, but, you know, some people like me believe it. It really happened. The fire did happen. We don't know how it started. You know, this is the Windy City, you know, because when you when there's fire and it's like a hot windy day and it blows like that oh it's scary you know just like the santa Ana winds in california which is scary like that so i've seen the movie many times a couple excuse me a couple times uh when i was a kid i loved the movie and had good songs you know it was a great musical uh but it just disappeared from local tv uh they don't show it anymore i don't know if they show it on tcm you know turn of classic movies I don't know. I, I haven't noticed it, uh, but it is on DVD. I know that. I don't know if it's on Blu-ray, but maybe someday I'll buy it. We'll see about that. And uh, I watch it again, you know, because it's a great movie. You know, those black and old black and white movies like you like to watch at night, like Sunday nights or at ten thirty. And it's just a nice, comforting feeling. You know, it's, uh, I love that. I really do. And uh, we'll see. We'll see about that. So uh, it was released on January 6, 1938 by 20th Century Fox. So uh, on change, it's not the 37 movie, it's 1938. <laughs> just to clarify that. Okay. Next up, I'm going to talk about... Um, I don't know if a lot of people remember this, but uh, this was a great memory of mine when I was a kid. I used to read uh, Peanuts, you know, based on the Charlie Brown characters, you know, just like the uh, the animated TV specials. They were they're shown on on television for many many years. But uh, when we, my family and I lived in the Rosa neighborhood in the early seventies. There was a store on Michigan Avenue. It was Kresge's, if anyone remembers that. Then it turned into Kmart. And those paperbacks were on sale. And they had them on the, what's that called? The spindle, the, you know, the, like, we're com the racks, you know, like a combo book. And they were there. And I noticed the pretty colors. I love Charlie Brown. And I asked my mom, can I buy one? And she said, yeah. So uh, I bought one. And you know what? I couldn't put it down. I just, uh, I loved it. And uh, these were sort of reprints of uh, the Peanuts comic strips that appeared in newspapers. I believe they were. And uh, I'll give you an example. And uh, like, for example, uh, the titles were uh, What's Next, Charlie Brown? Good Grief, Charlie Brown. Let's face it, Charlie Brown. And Snoopy was featured. And uh, so it was mostly it's those two like that. And they showed uh, the the Peanuts characters like way back when they were very little like that. And uh, you had the, all the characters, you know, you had Charlie Brown, you had Snoopy, Lucy, Charlie Brown's sister, Sally, Linus. Uh, they had Violet, uh, 
and Patty. Pepper, uh, I don't know about Peppermint Patty. She came later. There was Sherman. There was Schroeder. He played the piano. And all that. I don't know about Woodstock, uh, the bird. He came later. <laughs> but we all know Charlie Brown. He was like, uh, he didn't know how to have a lot of self-esteem. You know, he was not a great baseball player. And he also had the, he had to uh, deal with the kite-eating uh, tree. <laughs> <laughs> also, you have Snoopy uh, being the World War I flying ace with the sap with camel. You know, he used it as his doghouse. He had a lot of stuff in that doghouse. Anyway, so I started collecting them. I had about maybe three or four. And then, I don't know, when I got older, you know, they, they kind of been worn out and I threw them away. I wanted to re um, buy them again. Uh, you do find them on eBay or Etsy. If you'd like to collect them, which I love to get those, you know, that'd be kind of cool, you know, to get those um, for a collection because I enjoy reading them. I really do. I really do. And they were a lot of fun. It's, it was a beautiful time uh, during my childhood to, uh, you know, to watch old TV shows and read um, books like that you know, and the comic strips. And uh, so that was that. Okay. Okay, so that's it for this program. I'll do a recap of what I talked about. I talked about my tribute to TV anchorman and reporter Harry Porterfield, uh, the 1938 movie in old Chicago, and uh, the Peanuts paperback uh, books from the 1970s. And uh, this podcast will be published later on today, wherever podcasts are available. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, also Breaker, Overcast. Uh, it's also on Good Pods. I don't know if you heard about that app. It's um, I have it on mine. You can check that out. Also be uh, published on my blog, vanishchicagoland.blog. Also on my YouTube channel. Yeah, Chicago Stories, uh, hit, hit, excuse me, hit subscribe on all the apps and uh, my YouTube channel. Once you hit subscribe, you'll get a new episode, you get a notification. People always still ask me, where do I find your podcast? Where do I listen? You can listen on YouTube. It's easier that way for most people. Uh, also, it will be posted on my social media accounts, Facebook, X, which is Twitter, uh, Instagram threads, also on Reddit. Okay. I will probably do another podcast episode this weekend, uh, probably something about Halloween. We'll see. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> All right. So this is Pico Stiles, your host for Van Chicago and Stories, the podcast. Thank you for joining me. I enjoyed uh, talking, and I hope you enjoyed the show. So here's bye-bye for me, and here is Ray Rayner closing the show, saying bye-bye-bye with a little traveling music. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>